listening to the Pharmacy Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sports Pharmacy Podcast. My name is Dr. H and I am your host. I am a wellness pharmacist, pharmacy owner, and certified sports nutritionist. Join me while we discuss a wide range of topics ranging from health and wellness, sports, and even some small business secrets. Feel free to join our Discord for more interactions with me and other fellow listeners. Now let's get into the show. Welcome, 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 sports pharmacy fans. I have the distinct pleasure of having... I'm just going to say it. This is the first time me and him have seen each other face to face. We've chatted for quite some time and been able to schedule this, man. So I appreciate your time with all this. I have with me Dan Strauss, the founder of Hometown Pharmacy, Wisconsin. What's up, man? How are you? Excellent. Thank you for uh, inviting me on the show. It's so exciting to talk to you, bro. There's a lot of cool things that we're going to be talking about. We're going to dive into nutrient depletion. We're going to dive into vitamins. We're going to dive into some sports. Quick questions that I'll throw at you just to throw you off a little bit, and then we'll get out of here. Does that sound good? Let's have some fun. All right, man, let's do it. So, Dan, my man, tell the uh, audience a little bit about yourself. I'm an odd duck that I'm not a pharmacist. <clears throat> I'm actually a, a, a bean counter. And 20 some years ago, one of my clients who was a pharmacist came to me and says, hey, do you want to partner on five pharmacies? And uh, my first conception was incorrect. I thought, can we really compete against the chains? But I cared for them enough that we did a deep dive. And the more I looked into it, independent pharmacies have some distinct advantages. So we said yes. And uh, it was a very simple premise. Pharmacists take care of patients. I'll take care of you. The word got out. And uh, within a year, there's three other pharmacies that said, hey, I, I'm looking for my next uh, stage of life. And so can we be, become part of the family? And so we un, unexpectedly grew from five to eight to 17. And then it's like, okay, we need to think about this differently. And one of the things I bring to the table is I know I'm not that smart, but I learned early in my career that you find smart people, you ask questions and you learn. And then when you learn, you can learn from other people's wisdom and not have to make your own mistakes. So we did that and we did our own generics warehouse. And then we went from 17 to 24 to 30 to 50. And we topped out at 70 and now we're probably about 60. But with that, we wanted to have a footprint to really get into proactive care. So the first 10 years of my career, I was just the bean counter. I understood science in a very superficial level. And one day my, my wife came home and by the way, my wife has done every role in hometown except for be a pharmacist. And she was tucking one day and she learned about proton pump inhibitors. And she says, do you know that what this does to folks? And I says, no, I, I thought it was a good thing. And so she says, it has some repercussions if you're on it more than three weeks. And that's when I started learning about nutrient depletion and how it impacts. So of course, pharmaceuticals are good, but of course they have unintended consequences where you have nutrient depletion. So at that point it says, isn't that part of what we should be doing? If we recognize that it has nutrient depletion, should we be helping folks with that? And I happily said, yes, but of course that is the nutraceutical market. And that's more we're talking about rest of today. So I didn't want to hog the conversation. Did that answer your question okay? Yeah, man. No, you. I mean, it's, it's really interesting because I, Dan, I don't know very much about you, man. I know I did my research beforehand, but it's good to know where this all started from and what your passions are. So you mentioned you, when you first started on, you guys had five pharmacies. What year was that, if you don't mind me asking? 2003. 2003. Yeah. I was still in high school at that point, so I'm sorry. <laughs> no worries. But that's incredible, man. That was a good time to get into pharmacy because there was still room for growth and pharmacies were still able to be profitable from, from filling prescriptions and, and whatnot, which is a whole other piece that we can get into another time, Dan. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned nutrient depletion, and I, I really want to dive deeper into that because that's one thing that we're passionate about at Stonebriar is we have our core medications that we dispense, based, especially around hormone replacement therapy. And then we encourage the sale of vitamins to help with the nutrient depletion that you, you mentioned. So what is it that you're having a hard time with? Or is there anything that you have any ad advice for other pharmacies that are trying to get into that, that realm? And how do you break that barrier of differentiating yourself between a healthcare practitioner and being a quote unquote salesman to, to boost your supplement sales? Well, you, you said something very poignant there <clears throat> because how many pharmacists feel comfortable with sales? I can answer from a hometown perspective, 99% are not comfortable whatsoever. 
as a matter of fact, that was one of the major hurdles we had to overcome. Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, all our partners, we got together in a room and said that we were committed to actually teach them what we call the foundational six. And it's your multi, it's your rectum magnesium, it's your D3K2, it's probiotics, and creatine, et cetera, that we know everybody is deficient to some level. And our pharmacist said, we want, we're used to being perfect because we can't make mistakes because if we do, it impacts our patients' lives. So we invested heavily in what we call our intranet, where we had a science team. We put together white papers and videos. So we wanted to make sure the therapeutic trust was always maintained intact and matter of fact, enhanced. We grew the nutraceutical sales from a couple grand a month to quarter million a month, which certainly isn't shabby, but it was a far cry from what we wow. thought we were going to do. And that's where we end up having some great conversations with a pharmacist. And one of our key folks named Mike Kukas was maybe the most straightforward. He said, Dan, if a patient asks us a question, we're very good, right? That's in our comfort zone. We knock it out of the park and our success rate is close to 95%. He says, but if I have to initiate the conversation, then I got all these questions in my mind. Will the patient like this? Will the patient be able to afford it? Will they yell at me? Will they think I'm a salesman? And it's only by the grace of God that if they, if in their mind, they have all 10 of those questions answered yes, that they actually initiate the conversation. But he said, even then my hands get clammy, my stomach gets upset. I'm so uncomfortable. <laughs> I just don't do it. And it, it, it's funny because it, as I've shared the story with the rest of our pharmacists and peers around the country, they reacted very similar to you did. Shaking it up and down with a smile says, yep, that's us, right? That's true, yeah. So I thought, okay, our brilliance and the thing that we offer our society the most is our therapeutic trust. We take that very seriously and thank goodness because there's very few people in healthcare that, can, that patients can trust anymore, so it should be us. So once I learned that, I was like, okay, that's a challenge. And as a matter of fact, uh, Mike uh, gave me a bigger challenge. He says, Dan, your challenge that I get to you is, can you find a way to have your patient ask us a question? Now that was three and a half years ago. And I thought, wow, how do I get a patient who's uninformed to ask a question? And as I was asking my, our patients, they all said, we love this stuff. We wish you'd tell it to us. So to me, I'm just a bridge. I said, here's my pharmacist personality. Here's the patients. And heck that's me, right? Because I'm a patient. The more I learn, Really? D3K2, is that impactful? Vitamin D is a hormone. It's a key to your immune system, heart health, brain health, gut health. And we don't even know how important it is, much less measured it. I became passionate because my friends and families that learned about it loved it, right? I've probably given the vitamin D3K2 story. And that's another soapbox later on of what's wrong with our society and healthcare that we don't even look at that or monitor it, oh, yeah. even though it's so basic. That's a big one. That's a big one. So back to the, the, the challenge, right? How do we actually bridge? And we actually call it the pharmacist patient dilemma. Pharmacists are uncomfortable selling or initiating, but they're brilliant in responding to a consult. Patients want to know this stuff, but they don't know how to ask the question. So how do we build that bridge? Ironically, this is a side tangent, but I think it'll bring it together. Part of our bigger vision, we call it the eight pillars, which is really the independent pharmacy being an access point for the recalibration of healthcare. We're easy to get to, we have high therapeutic trust, we can do point of care testing. There's so many things we can do to be that first line of defense to make access to healthcare easier. And then with that, can we bring in teammates? Can we have relationships with physicians and behavior health and musculoskeletal, et cetera? And that got the attention of some significant folks as we've done our research and we believe in that same model. Independent pharmacies and their therapeutic trust are incredibly invaluable. What can we do to, to help them during this challenging time where their core model, which is usually 95% pharmaceutical, is under duress because PBM and, and Wall Street is doing the damages they're doing. When they heard about our model and our proactive care that says, we, we, we like that, we actually have something we think we can help. And so I got invited down to your neck of the woods. Actually, it was in, in the Dallas or Frisco area. And there's very significant people who have very significant capabilities. 
So the first two hours, I think they were they're interviewing me to make sure that I wasn't a crazy guy because mm -hmm. we say we're the family pharmacies that actually want to help you get all prescriptions, right? Mm -hmm. We want to help you with pharmaceutical and nutraceutical and food. That's what our, our pharmacies can do is we want to help you throughout your, your journey to health. We call it, you know, evolve. And um, so they said, okay, uh, you've, you've got a reputation for nutraceuticals. Tell us your challenges. And I said, okay, there's a lot of challenges. One, of course, is stigma. Virtually every person in the United States has uh, watched a 60 Minutes expose or read a USA Today article where vitamins are junk, right? But they never go on to say is bad vitamins are junk, poorly manufactured stuff is junk, but there's no denying the absolute base need for proper nutrition, right? And food always has been, always will be the best medicine, but it is very hard to actually eat enough to sustain what we, what our body needs. And so all supplements are is what they sound is whatever you can't eat, you need to supplement to get your body what you need. So wonderfully logical and common sense. So I said, okay, first the stigma, we have to educate our, our consumers and our patients why the junk that you see on the shelves of some retailers is different than what we carry because we're looking for efficacy. We need stuff that works. Mm -hmm. Our pharmacists are going to see you at church. They're going to see you at school, see you at the grocery store. So if we sell you something that doesn't work, that's going to damage our reputation. So no, we, we go through a vetting process to make sure we have works. What are other challenges? Pill fatigue, right? Because how many folks need just one supplement? Usually you're deficient on a number of nutrients. And how many people like swallowing 10, 12, 15, 18, 30 pills a day? Right. I mean, that's about where I'm at, Dan. I have a handful that I take every morning and one at night, man. So yeah, exactly, that's exactly what you mean. And uh, you're passionate about it, knowledgeable about it, but even that's kind of even hard because especially if you travel, uh, mm -hmm. how do I bring this all in? Yeah. Uh, taste. Well, as you know, B vitamins tend to taste pretty, pretty bad. They smell bad, et cetera. <laughs> so how do you actually get taste? Dosages, right? Because even the, the high quality multivitamins, it's the same pill, whether you're a 120 pound female or a 300 pound male. We know that mm -hmm. is the average averages. So you're probably getting too much of this and too little of that cost, right? Because if you're doing these in single bottles, by the time you start doing 30 pills, you're talking three, 400 bucks a month. Yep. And they said, good, we think we have something that is three, five years ahead of itself, but we believe it's going to solve a fair amount of that. So we found this amazing machine that we can custom compound or custom blend personalized supplements to, for each individual. So now those dosages can be correct. Hey, if I need 500 milligrams and you need 400 or 600, et cetera, for that to actually go up and down. Next, of course, it has to be in a method that people enjoy. Well, we found is people like to eat, people like to drink, people don't necessarily like taking pills. So we want to be able to have this in a powdered form or therefore folks could determine how they'd actually want to consume it. The science around it is absolutely fascinating because we worked with the multiple disciplines as well as science that we all know well. And the main driver around this is pharmaceutical induced nutrient depletion. So we know if you take a medicine, it's designed to do something, but usually it creates a reaction in the body, which can, can strip you of different things you need. And if it's replenished, that the heads of Alara were passionate about this because they had family members who were significantly impacted by pharmaceutical induced nutrient depletion. And the more they researched it, they said, this is something people need to know about. And now what's ironic is I asked them is why are you talking to me? I, I'm just a, a cheesehead from Wisconsin. And they said, we've been researching it quite a while and we believe independent pharmacies are the best distribution channel to teach patients about pharmaceutical induced nutrient depletion. Happily, and I, I, tell me if you agree, that makes sense on the surface, right? Is we do, we have of the relationships, we yeah. talk, that should be our strength. That should be something that we're very special in. I said, but we have the pharmacist patient dilemma. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. says, what's that? And so I share what we did earlier is we know this stuff. And if a patient asks us, we're brilliant but we're very uncomfortable initiating it. So we're going to have a technology or an app to bridge that gap. 
So part of the reason why it's taken so long is we wanted to do that really well. So if folks download the app, you'll see it's a survey of between 35 and 38 questions. We're constantly tweaking it, including the pharmaceuticals you're on. And it's able to go to all 15,000 NDCs and 250,000 OTCs to be able to go right directly to the science. And I bring that up because what human being could possibly be on top of 15,000 NDCs and the nutrient depletion when you're trying to fill 200 trips a day, right? It's humanly impossible. Right. And that was one of the things our pharmacists were concerned about was how could I possibly know all that? No, you, you, you don't have to, right? That the app is designed to do that for you based on absolute science. We go directly to it. And that's the cool thing about technology is we can be that good at. And if you had a chance, there's nutrient panels that we have for the, the, the customer to make it fun. And soon there'll actually be videos there. Because some folks like the TikTok oh, nice. here, I want my stuff in 15 seconds, or other folks want to read, we want to cater to all. You got it. <laughs> Say, listen, millennial over here, I can't focus for longer than 10 seconds. So, <laughs> And so our videos will be between that five and 10 yeah. seconds and those bullet points. And I don't know if you have a chance to download it yet or not, but also within have, the nutrient have, yeah. panels, you'll be able to say like magnesium, what impacts does it have? And it'll have seven to nine different subjects, family history, stress, anxiety, uh, heart health, immune system. And then you can punch in that button and say, wow, I didn't realize that magnesium had an impact in these items. And there'll actually be hyperlinks there going directly to the evidence-based science. In this day and age of trust, we wanted to help people actually fact check us. So we actually put it right there. Does us pharmacies, we don't deal in snake oil. We don't deal in, in, in fads, we deal in science. Yep. So we were very adamant that app had to do that. And why? Because if a patient even sees a couple of those buttons and even looks at a couple of those items, the chance of them come into our pharmacist now and says, Hey, is that true? Does magnesium actually help with, with sleep? Does it actually help with restless leg? Does it actually help with migraines? Yes, it does. And here's why. Mm -hmm. So therefore, even if folks don't choose to have the Wallara solution, we do want them educated because now we believe it'll actually help increase the front of the store nutraceutical sales because folks says, I, Hey, I'm, I'm not ready for that, but I do want to help with my migraines. And because it's a sports cast, here's something I, I was a former athlete. I, I played college baseball. I had a chance to, mm -hmm. to, to go to the minor leagues, chose not to strokes a career. And one of our key people, Sean Casey, he works with world-class athletes. I think you've yes. had a guest before. And it's yep. amazing. We had our, we had our big episode. Sorry. We had a big around a big episode around ADHD and when the Adderall shortage was going on. I, that, he's a brilliant guy. I, I really enjoy him. Um, and what he'll tell you is, especially with athletes, we do an awful lot to burn energy, right? To be an mm -hmm. athlete, you are burning tremendous amounts of energy and you're utilizing an awful lot of nutrients. So it's amazing the nutrient depletion that can happen with athletes because of just how active they are. And it makes sense, right? If, if you need a hundred gallons of fuel to have a tractor plow a hundred acre field, you need to have enough fuel. And one of the worst pieces of advice I think that's ever been given, especially to females is eat less, exercise more, right? Now, of course it's, it's meant to the be worst. It is, it's horrible because yeah. eating less, it's meant to be eat less Doritos, but they never say eat more fruit, eat more vegetables, right? <laughs> Consume more water. Never, right? which is absolutely critical, right? We find that athletes, even if they're not on a pharmaceutical, they can benefit by understanding their nutrient depletion. We're always shocked that, especially like female runners, how easy it is for them to break bones because they are so active and they consume so much. Hmm. Now, the nice thing about being passionate about this is you, you start reading science and you start grasping things. And because I'm a bridge, I talk to myself like I, when pharmacists sometimes talk, it can be big letter words, what I tell patients are, okay, what's that mean? So one of the, my favorite followings is Dr. Bruce Ames, triage, theory, and nutrient depletion. So I've always been fascinated. Let's check that out. It's good. In layman's terms, it's that our bodies are so sophisticated, it will do whatever it needs this moment to survive at the expense of tomorrow. So mm -hmm. I use magnesium. You need magnesium for your heart to beat, right? So your brain and your body is going to say, I'm going to find magnesium wherever I can find it. And our redundancies, right? Our bones are our best bank account of our body. 
and then our organs and our muscles and our cellular level. So, wow, if I'm taking all the magnesium on my bones to make sure my heart beats, someday my bones are going to be depleted. I'm going to have an issue. Same thing with your heart, same thing with else. So you start realizing the impacts of nutrient depletion. It's almost, it, it's very straightforward, but it usually takes different perspectives. Say it's that important, right? Proper nutrition is, is vital to long-term health. Mm -hmm. So that's where, well, Lara soon will not only have the, the, the supplement, but we're working with sunbasket.com to be able to give one of the best discounts in the nation on quality food from kitchen to table. And that's amazing. They were also fascinated to work with independent pharmacies because a big part of the cost structure for those kitchen table is they have to catch the customer's eyes. So you can only imagine how much they have to invest in social media marketing to compete against everybody else out there because they have mm -hmm. the high quality <clears throat> that would probably meet our therapies. This says if independent pharmacies can spread the word, now we can take those savings and pass along to our customers. That's what I liked is if they can come into our pharmacies and get the best deal in the nation on quality food. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. our uh, us independent pharmacies can truly be good at pharmaceutical and nutraceutical and food. That app was such a key and that's what we're encouraging. We'll continue to invest in making that app. Soon it'll be accessible, have attached to, to wearables. So your Fitbits nice. and your smartwatches. Yeah. At the end of the day, we believe that we need patients to be in charge of their own health. To do that, we have to educate them. Yep. Then, of course, we're there for them. We can help them in all these different avenues and hopefully keep them from having that 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 troublesome diagnosis someday. As a on the patient side, I was able to get my Valera order logged in, got the app, scanned the QR code. Very simple. So you put your basic information in, name, date of birth, all that other stuff. The address, obviously, for shipment. And then it, it dives deeper and I, I had pulled up on the app some of the questions that that are asked on there and there was 36 questions and it really dove deep into, here it is the survey, really dove deep into some of the things that are lacking. Like one of, one of my favorite questions on here, and if you've listened to the podcast before, I'm a huge proponent for vitamin DK2. That's my favorite vitamin to recommend to everybody. And one of the questions on here was asked straight up, how much sunlight do you get? And for 80%, 85% of the population in the United States, they'll say never. We're in an office, we're in a pharmacy all the time, that we never get any sunlight. And that's the reason a lot of us are, are short on vitamin D. And you, you mentioned it, that if your body is starving for something, it'll find another way to get it through your bones, through your muscles, through depletion. And so our job, specifically us as pharmacists, me being sports nutritionists, is that we're supposed to rebuild that nutrition, rebuild that those depletions. And if you're a weekend warrior at the gym, you're just starting to work out or a full-time athlete here next to us, we have FC Dallas and we have the Cowboys facility right next door to each other. And so we have that exposure to help a larger group of patients, both from really any age, starting from high school. And well, Laura is cool because I have my list of vitamins that I like to take. And I know you and I spoke about it, is that when I received my product, I wanted to make sure that obviously I wasn't double dipping on things and to make sure that this was covering everything I needed. And to be honest, it did. I, I did, it, it took everything that I needed all in one scoop. I don't like the flavor packet because I mix it with my protein every morning and it's phenomenal. It's what's wonderful. I am, a, I have signs up at my pharmacy now, encouraging patients to sign up. We'll put, I'll put the, the link in the bio for this one where you can sign up specifically, specifically for Stonebriar pharmacy. Sorry, Dan, I got to take this one from you, man. Absolutely. Go for it. <laughs> I appreciate that. And so you came out here and we didn't even get to meet each other, man. Is that what I heard? It went by fast, didn't it? Man, yeah. It's a, did you like the area? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's beautiful. The, the traffic is pretty intense, but I yeah. definitely love Texas. Yeah, when I, I went to school in Virginia, and I'm used to the Northern Virginia traffic, which is just terrible. So this is nothing compared to the D.C. area. Wow. Yeah. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't share that one of the attractions and what started this was a visit in Kentner, Texas, to a very special place called Camp Cowboy. It's ran by Scott Robeson, a former Green Beret, and it is okay. a heck of a facility that uses horse therapy to be able to help veterans with a number of items to do that. So it's a very special place. And Scott Robeson is a very special human in that not only his experience, but he, he works uh, with a lot of different areas in healthcare. So mm -hmm. he asked me a bunch of questions about the eight pillars and 
he must have, have, have liked the thoughts because he helped make the phone calls to connect. And that's how we met with uh, the gentleman that, that owned Wallara, which has been an invaluable relationship and very pleasant news. But Camp Cowboy is a special place and definitely want to give them a quick shout out. Wow. Okay. Yeah. We'll be sure to tag them in that. It's amazing. I don't even know. I, I'll see. I don't even know where Kempner is. <laughs> so that's like new to, new to me. But yeah. I'm, I'm going to check them out, man. I really appreciate you sharing that. So I can't let you get away without talking a little bit of sports. Is that fair? Please. All right. I don't know much about baseball, but I know you said you played a lot of baseball and you mentioned that you're a Packers fan, right? Being from Wisconsin, obviously. Yeah. How would you rate their season so far? Well, we're four games in three games in. We expected it to be an up and down season. We were looking for kind of growth. We're very young, and especially with first year quarterback. We are pleased with some of the signs that we're seeing. Um, That's good. Our defense has been disappointing. We've been besieged by industries, right? Our in injuries. Yeah. Our all pro left tackle has missed three of the four games. Our all pro left guard, uh, he was out. He might be coming back this next week. We had a great yeah. comeback against the Saints at home, which was exciting because it proves that there's the moxie in the group that, that doesn't believe in quitting. But we expected this to yeah. be up and down. And I, I tell my kids they're incredibly uh, lucky because I'm old enough that I remember the Packers. I, I was born in 63, so of course I'm too young to uh, remember the Lombardi days. Yep. In the 70s and early 80s, uh, Chris Berman at ESPN used to refer to the Green Bay and Tampa Bay games, the Bay of Pigs. And <laughs> then Ron Wolf makes a trade for Brett Favre. And we get 15 years of Hall of Fame quarterback play there. And then we get Aaron Rodgers for 15 yep. years of Hall of Fame quarterback. So we've been incredibly spoiled, right? So 30 years yep. of, of being very good and getting a couple Super Bowls. And now mm -hmm. it's okay. Jordan Love repeat the Aaron Rodgers magic. Uh, way too soon to tell, way too much pressure, but a lot of pressure. The, the throw we made against Atlanta was one of those that are, it's pretty unique because it takes a combination of skill and intelligence and guts. And so I think that's what us Wisconsin is. Just give us, just give us a, a want to and intelligence and guts and, and we'll support you. So it's that passion that comes with it. And one of the, one of my favorite aspects of teams is their ability to rebound from something that shows, cause you said it shows moxie. It shows the intensity that they have. And I remember, well, I hate the Saints. I'll be the first to tell you on this podcast, I hate the Saints. Being a Panthers fan myself, we were, we're always like trained to hate them. So watching them go down like that was pretty fun. Enjoyable. <laughs> and one of the half a million uh, folks that have a worthless piece of paper saying we're a Packer shareholder, but have that with pride. Oh, yeah, I saw that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I they mean, owned by the city. Yeah. That's rare. Yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, are, are you? Do you have one, one of those certificates? Yes. Oh, that's awesome. That's fantastic. Yeah. The, uh, the soccer team that I support, they're called Bayern Munich in Germany. And mm -hmm. they have a rule that 50 plus 1% of the team has to be owned by the people. Oh. And just similar to you, there's a bunch of people that have certificates. I'm on the wait list. I'm still waiting for mine. I've, I've been on the wait list since 2000. Not, uh, nine. 2009 is when I joined the wait list. So it's been 14 years. I'm still waiting. But that's really cool, man. That's cool. So we talked sports. We talked Valera. I'm very excited about it, and I can't wait for to share it with more people. How do we get people to buy into Alara, Dan? That's what I want to figure out is how do we encourage our pharmacists? How do we encourage our patients that we're doing this not just for, obviously, we're going to make our profit on it, but how do we show that we're more invested in them rather than the money behind it? So we've been very quiet for the last year or two because we really wanted – the app and the process to be sound. So we are well along that learning curve now. We've come very proud of it already and we already know how to improve it. The nice thing is this is our coming out party. We have talked to our, our peer group in St. Louis. So they've been the kind of the inner circle, if you will, the, the peer group to give us feedback. Now we're at the stage where we'll have a very soft presence at NCPA. We'll have a floor swing mats and this may sound odd, but hopefully positive. We want to work with independents who actually believe in proactive care, that believe in pharmaceutical, nutraceutical food. And with that, we'll have a lot of support for them. We're putting together different videos and all the nice thing about doing this for the last uh, year is we, we've gotten an awful lot of feedback. 
our own pharmacist is what about this? What about that? What about the efficacy path, mechanisms of action pathways? Yes. And that's why we came up with this formula. As a matter of fact, we're already enhancing and that this next run will be adding collagen, creatine and colostrum. So and that. and awesome. that'll actually uh, uh, impact the, the price point in a, in, a, in a pleasant way, as well as we were, we've heard loud and clear that we want to have the ability to be flexible. And so if a patient says, hey, I want to ramp up or down my D or magnesium can do that, as well as I want my pharmacist to ramp it up and down. So that'll be out probably the first mm -hmm. part of November to give some flexibility. We'll have guardrails, right? We're going to make sure that people can't do anything to harm themselves. And then we'll also give the That's variability <laughs> of, of price point too. Mm -hmm. uh, I can definitely say that Willar is committed and it is about it has always been about the patient uh, early on, both Jake from Alarm and myself says, we want to be able to give this to our mothers and our spouses and our kids with pride. And Absolutely. at the end of the day, that was key is patient outcomes has to be part of our future, right? Healthcare has to be focused on patient outcomes. Mm -hmm. And we call it the four foundations of health, right? Nutrition, movement, sleep, and stress management, right? And nutrition should be our bailiwick. And that's where pharmaceutical, nutraceutical and food are a key to that. If we help with nutrition and we get people properly nourished bodies, they can actually heal. So to do that, how do you meet people where they're at? It's got to be effective. It's got to be cost effective. It's got to be something that people enjoy, not a chore, right? That's where we were passionate about this is can we get it something that's in a drinkable form? And like you said, the, the flavor packets, that's always going to have the humanness to it, right? Some folks love it. Some folks don't like it. Some in between. But that's why we separated the powder from the flavor packet. And you're like my wife where in the protein shake, she loves it, right? Other yeah. folks put it in applesauce, Easy. right? Other folks that's will put it in their smoothie. Mm -hmm. And so it's, we wanted that flexibility so people could consume it in different ways that, that met their needs. Dan, I think we said it all, man. I really appreciate your time. This has been great. I can't wait for more patients to get access to this. Now that I've started taking it myself and I see it, I can practice what I preach and teach other far other patients to do what I do. Dan Strauss, Hometown Pharmacy. I appreciate you, man. I sure appreciate you and thanks for your time. And I hope our paths meet many times in the future. Yes, sir. Next time you come to Texas, come see us, all right? Will do. All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you for listening. If you enjoyed the podcast, consider giving us a five-star review anywhere that you get your episodes. Follow us at Sports Pharmacy Pod, as well as me, your host, at Dr. Mixalot. Join our Discord server for more interactions with me and fellow listeners. As always, stay well, stay hydrated, and I will catch you next time. <laughs>